Hi, myself Dr. Vivek Shashindran and in today's episode we will be talking about vocal cord palsy. I have done a previous episode on vocal cords. So basically where we have described about these two important structures that is the vocal cords. So there are two vocal cords in the larynx or in the sound box and these two are very important when it comes to voice production. So it's a dynamic structure where these vocal cords when we phonate or when we speak these vocal cords come together and as we breathe these vocal cords move apart. Now if for whatever reason the patient can develop a vocal cord palsy. Now this palsy can be confined to one side or it could be involving both the sides. So it could either be a unilateral vocal cord palsy or a bilateral vocal cord palsy. Now today we would discuss about post thyroidectomy vocal cord palsy. Now thyroidectomy is probably one of the most commonly performed surgical procedures for thyroid swellings, thyroid malignancies. And one of the biggest challenges when we deal with thyroid swellings or perform a thyroidectomy is identification of the nerve, identification of the recurrent laryngeal nerve which supplies the vocal cords. Now most of the times we are able to dissect the thyroid gland safely off the nerve. But at times the tumor can be infiltrating the nerve or we may have to dissect, stretch the nerve and this could probably lead up or end up with a vocal cord palsy. Now these patients would complain of hoarseness of voice in the post-operative period. So as I already mentioned, in order to have good voice, both the vocal cords should approximate when we phonate. Now if one vocal cord is paralyzed, so there is a gap between the vocal cords and air tends to leak, so patient will have a breathy voice. Now majority of these cases, they recur spontaneously if the nerve is intact. If the nerve is transected, cut during the surgery, it will not. So now if that can be made out at the time of surgery, we can kind of do some kind of a renovation procedure on table. Now if for some reason, if the nerve is intact, but the vocal cord palsy persists into the post-operative period, most of these patients would have a recovery. A few of them would have compensation by the opposite side vocal cord. However, a small subset of patient would continue to have symptoms beyond six months. Now, in these subset of patients, what options do we have? So we have the option of either injecting some materials just lateral to the vocal cord so that you kind of either bulk up the vocal cord or you push the vocal cord to the midline. The second option would be kind of medialize the vocal cord from externally. So externally, we make a small window within this laryngeal framework that is in the thyroid cartilage and we use silicon blocks to kind of push the paralyzed vocal cord to the midline. So in effect, what happens is that when the patient phonates, the vocal cords can approximate. So we are basically kind of repositioning or changing the position of the vocal cord by pushing it or medializing it from an external point. And this can bring about a significant or a dramatic, I would say, change in the voice of the patient. Thank you so much.